When it comes to disc brakes, there are solid rotors, and then there's what's referred to as floating rotors. One design has an Achilles heel, while the other is so comprehensively superior that nearly every modern motorcycle comes with it. What's the difference and why does it matter? Let's open up the shop manual and find out. This episode of the shop manual is brought to you by Kershaw my go-to unboxing knife and a tool I carry with me everywhere. Get 20% off your order at kershawknives.com with discount code 20TSM. Solid discs are pretty straightforward. They're one piece cut from a solid sheet of steel. Meanwhile, floating discs have a steel rotor blade and then a separate carrier, which is often made out of aluminum. The two pieces are fixed together with rivets, which some people call bobbins and the rivets maintain an air gap between the rotor blade and the carrier, so that the rotor is said to float around the carrier. The construction of these two types of brake discs impacts their price and their weight. And in the rare instance where you have a true full floating rotor, which we will get to a little later, floating discs improve pad alignment and thus braking power. But the most significant difference between these two designs is in heat tolerance. And heat is the biggest issue in braking. When you pull on the front brake lever, the pads and the calipers squeeze the discs, and friction between the pads and rotors slows you down by converting the energy of your forward motion into heat. And as with all materials, the steel of the rotor is going to expand as it gets hotter. The disc will grow in thickness, but even more so in diameter, but it does not grow uniformly. That's because the temperature isn't consistent across the disc hotter toward the perimeter than it is at the center, and that variation in temperature within the disc can cause it to warp or dish. And any deviation from flat and straight is going to reduce pad contact and therefore braking force, sometimes dramatically. Now, under hard use on the street, your brake disc might get up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, which a solid rotor can handle without warping. At the track, however, brake temps can be two or even three times hotter than that. And that means a lot more thermal expansion. And that's where floating rotors really shine. They isolate the hottest part of the disc from the carrier with rivets in an air gap, and that allows the rotor blade to expand without warping. The separate friction disc is also better at dissipating heat, which helps keep the pads from melting and helps prevent the fluid in the calipers from boiling. And by replacing the heavy steel center of a solid disc with an aluminum carrier, two-piece discs are often quite a bit lighter, which is good for all aspects of performance. And in racing application, rotors are truly full floating. They have an air gap, but the button design also allows for lateral movement so the disc can shift and run perfectly parallel to the pads for better initial bite and brake feel. There's actually so much free play between the rotor and the carrier that it rattles. For everyday use, that amount of movement isn't ideal for a variety of reasons. So two-piece rotors designed for the street are actually semi-floating, not full floating. The rivets that secure the rotor to the carrier are either clamped tight or use spring washers to eliminate free play. The design still allows for thermal expansion, so you get the heat tolerance of a true full floating rotor, but without the clatter or the risk of pad separation and nobody outside of an absolute pro is gonna miss the 1% improvement in brake feel. As for solid discs, they were the norm 30 years ago, but now you mostly only see them on the rear brake or perhaps the front brake on cheaper or less performance-oriented motorcycles. Modern motorcycles, though, almost exclusively use semi-floating rotors because they are lighter, and even if people aren't ripping around at race pace, folks still like the performance headroom that floating discs offer. <laughs> 